What is good? What is good? What is really, really good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the Industry Outsiders Wrestling Show. This is your boy James, aka Hollywood J Black, live in the building once again. I got my man's, my main man, <coughs> Big M F and Sid is in the building. How you doing tonight, sir? How you doing today? Well, night, day, whatever. I lost track of time. I don't know what it is. What's what's going on? That maybe that's the question that we should be asking. What is going on is a whole lot of wrestling over this past week. Um, yes, yeah, so much wrestling. I mean, we, we talked about, about war games. We talked about war games on our last show. Yeah, we talked about Survivor Series, Raw, NXT, AEW, SmackDown, and some. We turned some injury happened last night on SmackDown, which we'll get into later. Yes. And also, something very new happened on SmackDown that I am excited about. People are hating it, but they don't understand it. Of course. That is, so, and that's how it always goes. Let's get into Survivor. And I, I have a special five for five for you, sir, at the end of this show. Oh, I can't wait. I, I've been excited ever since you told me about it. So. <laughs> Um, start the breakdown. I'm going to share a couple places so we can get this party started. So we're going to start off with Survivor Series. Survivor Series is one of my favorite pay-per-views of the Big Four season. Um, I still don't consider it the minimal pay-per-views to be all that great. And it's not the fact that the talent isn't trying. It's the fact that people really don't give a shit. There's so much wrestling on the TVs nowadays. Having 12 to 16 pay-per-views a year kind of hurts it. Um, I know you know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. But, like, money in the bank is necessary. I think they can go back to having Hell in a Cell at a big four pay-per-view and be done with that pay-per-view. Um, but it's all about the WWE Network and what they do. But anyway, Survivor Series was there. Survivor Series was fucking awesome. It was. The no, best pay-per-views no, no. we have had in a while. I mean, and remember the big question that we had going into this is what kind of work, uh, what kind of effort were we going to get from the NXT guys on both well, and, and gals uh, when we were talking about the like how or like how they were going to perform after War Games because War Games was undoubtedly one of the most brutal spectacles um, as it always is, but even more so this time because you had two basically giants in there. Well, three, if you count Rhea Ripley, you know, my next ex-wife, you know what I mean? Um, Got shout that. Hey, Ripley, how you doing, girl? Anyway. <laughs> I'm going to get in trouble. I don't care. Anyways, I don't give a shit. Fuck it. It is what it is. But we, I mean, just basically monsters on the midway. We haven't had a lot of monsters inside war games. We only had like one or two. This time yeah. we actually had. The first year we had Kelly and Dane. Mm -hmm. Last year we had Eric and Ivar. Yep. Um, but Keith Lee, Keith Lee, Keith Lee. Woo -woo. I keep on saying this man's name because <laughs> this man, I think Vince McMahon had, and Triple H have this great plan for this 40-plus-year-old wrestler. Let's <laughs> not forget, he is in his 40s. Oh, I know. I know. I have a strong feeling at WrestleMania this year because they advertised NXT as actually being part of the main card of WrestleMania this year. This should be something. Um, I have a prediction. I know it's not going to happen, but here's a prediction. Okay. Keith Lee starts the next season of WWE NXT as a unified champion, holding all three heavyweight titles. That would be insane. <clears throat> um, I actually think... The path of destruction 
See, I think they need to change up this Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm leading to Keith Lee in a second. I think that what the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal should do is make it so that the winner of that battle royal, kind of like how, remember how uh, Impact had, where if you, I, I can't remember what it was. I think it was Feast of Fight or something like that. Oh, where if you, Feast of Fight, Feast of Fire. Yeah, where if you want it, you got a shot at any title you want if you got the specific, uh, the Feast briefcase. Um, I think that they, that should be part of the, uh, the, the stipulations for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. If they did something like that, then I think it would be popping. Hold on, we got a comment here. Let's see, they did. Yeah, uh, Mr. Garza, how you doing? I hope, hope everything is good, Mr. Garza. Appreciate you uh, pulling through. Um, yeah, so, like, if they did something like that, then I could see Keith Lee winning that battle royal, which I think it would be fairly easy for him to do, um, especially when we're going to get into NXT and what he did to Adam Cole. <laughs> um, he but still has he, not landed, ladies and gentlemen. He's he not landed at all. Um, and then next, next, and as soon as he did, he got Pele kicked right back out of the building. <laughs> I, I can see Keith Lee winning that match, automatically getting a title shot at either the NXT Heavyweight Championship at at, at a at Survivor. I mean, at WrestleMania, or going on to take on a a a B roster title, as because we now know that NXT is. The main roster now, uh, <laughs> as it's been advertised and proven. Uh, but we'll talk about that. But I can see Keith Lee, great grand things for Keith Lee, like you said, easily a championship by WrestleMania season. All right, so we had at Survivor Series, we had the Cruiserweight title match. It was supposed to be Garza versus Leo Rush, but Garza suffered an injury at War Games Free Show. So it ended up being Leo Rush versus Tazawa versus. Uh, wasn't it? It was a SmackDown's Cruiserweight. Isn't it uh, Gulak? Oh, no. It was um, the Lucha Dragon. Um, Kalisto. Uh, Kalisto. Okay. Okay. Leo Rush continues to put on phenomenal performances after coming back from being gone for six months because the WWE hated him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 between. The request that he had his family go with him, which I'm uh, see, this is my whole thing about the whole Leo Rush situation, right? I under like with his whole family situation, they knew about Leo Rush requested his family, um, you know, requested his family to be there, right? They knew, so it's not like you know this was a thing. So they accommodated him, and now it's a problem after the fact. Well, like, it, it okay, so he never wanted his family involved in any storylines. Yeah, exactly. He didn't want to involve just he just wanted to be around his family because I guess they have the wife is either pregnant or they have a newborn son. Yeah. I think that around the time that this happened. And the main um, issue was Hector Garza took it upon himself to find his wife in the crowd and mess with her. Oh yeah, which you already know how that was gonna turn out, which was not good. Um Um it, even the most passive aggressive person, Jake the Snake Roberts, didn't allow that shit. So you can only imagine a man as intense as Leo Rush. Uh, would do. I mean, given the situation, which I fully expect and I fully understand. Uh, so that's kind of that, that kind of adds into the intensity. So they showed the injury and the attack that Leo Rush did to Garza uh, when Leo, uh, Garza disrespected him. He slapped, knew that was, that motherfucker. slapped the dog shit, dog piss out of him. It was like that one slap that we kept replay, replaying with the with the uh, with the you with the Russian dudes and smacked the shit out of the uh, dude. Yeah. Let's, let's, get, let's get something straight here. Leo Rush is a top tier performer. This yeah. man, this man, and the aforementioned Keith Lee tore down the independent scene in one on one matches. Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, without a doubt. Uh, and and that's and that's kind of the thing. I lo I love that. <laughs> the one thing that I've loved about this whole like new this new NXT, it's like. They've taken all these guys that ROH had no idea what to do with and have turned them into megastars. <laughs> well, <laughs> so when we get back to, um, when we get to NXT this week, I have something to say about the Undisputed Era. Yeah. But now let's go into the, um, Leo Rush kept his title in a great yep. match. Yep. Then we had the tag team match. 
which was the Viking Raiders versus official Fish and O'Reilly versus yeah. the New Day. Yeah. And like everybody knew what's coming, the Viking Raiders dominated this match. Yeah, no, you talked about this. I I, I said that um I don't I, I couldn't remember. I think I picked the New Day almost. Yeah. Or did I pick the I I figured that you'd have to go and show off your crown jewel. I didn't think that <laughs> WWE would pull the trigger and have and have the Viking Raiders win. I didn't think that that was gonna happen, but they did. Um so when they pinned Fish and O'Reilly, who they never had a match with in NXT. Yeah. I um, wish they should have had a couple of matches against Fish and O'Reilly, but it never came to fruition due to the fact that Bobby Fish was off injured. Yeah, so they had the match. It was it was um they had the match between Strong and O'Reilly. Yeah. And then um but the, the Vikings Raiders didn't even lose the belts. No, to, the Vikings to Raiders them. never lost in NXT. They left NXT as the tag team champions. Yeah. So tournament thing, and then yeah. Because uh, under any normal circumstances, you can say that Fish and O'Reilly were going to beat the Viking Raiders. There was no plan in that happening. So no, the, the Viking Raiders are a special breed. I wish that they would go back to the War Raiders name, which is what they should be. Yeah. But I digress in that one. Let me pull up the rest of the card so I don't miss anything. Give me one it second. Should, it should have just called them the War Vikings, okay? War Vikings. Instead of Peaceful Vikings. Although those are probably rarer than anything else but you know whatever that's neither here nor there ladies and gentlemen you said the peace you said the peaceful vikings what the fuck? yeah i said i said the war they should have called them the war vikings if Are you going to do like this peace 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 <laughs> i just can't right. wait for Sir logan oh, to come out of there manager the cross branded tag team battle royal featuring all right, here we go the street profits hawkins the riders the good brothers the Lost Sons, um, Imperium, uh, Fandango, the Lucha, the Lucha guys, Bobby Roode, Dolph Ziggler, The Revival, and Heavy Machinery. Um, Ziggler and Roode win this match. It was just a regular battle royal, in my opinion. Yeah. Well, I kind of figured that Ziggler and Roode would win this match. Do you know? Got to have the Smarmy Hills win. I said it was either probably going to be them or the Street Profits. Um, the, I, I just don't like the whole – I mean, we'll get we'll get to it at the end. But I guess it kind of tells the, the, the sort of a, a story. But, um, but yeah, man. Um, yeah, Dolph Ziggler and Roode, Smarmy Hills, you know how it goes. All right, so now the main show kicks off. And we start off with the women's Survivor Series matchup. Team Raw consisting of Charlotte Flair, Kyrie Sane, Asuka, Sarah Logan for some reason, and Natalia. And we got Team NXT, James's future ex-wife, Rhea Ripley, Candice Murray, <laughs> Tony Storm, Bianca Belair, and Io Shirai. And Team SmackDown, Sasha Banks, Dana Brooke, Nikki Cross, Carmella, and Lacey Evans. This was a decent match. I had some good spots to it. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. I liked it. Um, I gotta switch the banner real quick. I just, I just realized this. My bad. So, um, shit happens. You don't go there, okay? Do you not go there? Anyways, um, <laughs> so that match in and of what itself. More would you cause? What more is you take? Gotta live my life like this one more move to me. Oh, Lord. I should have never said nothing. Anyways, so this was a good match. It was a good match in the sense of um, we've rarely ever had these these women forum for, we, you know, like like a good women's forum for a match. And they've been good as of late. The later, the latter Survivor Series that have happened now has gotten popping uh, with this particular one. And you know the stakes were could never be higher in this match. So well, this I have to give I have to give credit where credit's due. Um, Candice LeRae, Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, they all Rhea Ripley, everybody but Tony Storm competed in the women's war games match. Yeah, three of which three members of the team, well two members of the team, were on the opposite side of Rhea Ripley and Candice LeRae. Yeah, and what the whole thing is that when you go to war. You gotta have like like when you want to go to war against a brand, you're gonna have to get people that you know basically people that have went to war with you. Uh, that was kind of the perfect spot, the perfect match right there. 
I so like it. It seemed to me at a point that Candice LeRae and Io Shirai faked injuries. Camera. Yeah. Oh. They faked injuries. I, to the back. Um, I don't know why Natalia thought Sasha Banks has changed, I guess. Even though last month she was telling her to go join her dead father in hell. Natalia continues to be the most gullible, boring women's wrestler in the WWE. <sighs> You think that she learned? You think that Natalia would have been the first one to turn turn into what Bailey turned into? Because she's had the the longest reign of people turn her back on her. But I digress. Okay, I I love I love Natty. I love her work in the ring. I don't love her anything else. <laughs> she's a sucker. That's what she is. This is this this. It's like that. If you can give her a new theme song, it's that new Jonas Brothers song, "Sucker." That would be the perfect theme song for Natalia Nightheart because that's what she is. So I digress. Sasha Banks has the bank statement on Rhea Ripley, and yep. here come Candice LeRae and Io Shirai, who have tried to kill each other over the last few months because Io Shirai tried to kill Candice LeRae. Yep. Well, uh, seemingly all that is over, and we'll get to that part in a moment. But, um, yeah, um, but, but yeah, that, I mean, know, this was actually the weekend of Rip this was the weekend of Ripley. Yeah, yeah, they, they established, 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 the, 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 Rhea Ripley as the next threat in the women's division. Um, maybe they finally have someone who can dethrone Shayna. And actually let Shayna move on to the main roster because the women's division NXT got hurt because they gutted it. And now yeah. they're building up all these new people. Forget dethroning Shayna. Let's talk about dethroning eventually uh, freaking Becky Lynch. I mean, yeah, I said it. I said it. I said it. I know you're looking at me all funny, but let me tell you, tell you like it is, sir. She, Who else is beating Becky Lynch? Charlotte Flair, and Sasha Banks, all, all, all in, in, in a in a what in a in a week span? Oh no, Rhea Ripley, she's had a hell of a month. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, okay, she didn't beat uh, Becky Lynch, but she almost fucking did. All right, so let, <laughs> let let's call a spade a spade. And there is no one, e even right now in WWE, outside of Oscar, that presents a threat to uh, Becky Lynch right now. Yeah. Um. Uh, if if Oscar doesn't win the belt, then then you know the next in line is gonna be Shayna Baszler. After that, then if, if Shayna Baszler does beat Becky Lynch, then you already know that when Rhea Ripley comes, she's coming for uh um Shayna Baszler. Well, and that, gonna see, are we going to see the Shayna Baszler Ronda Rousey match? I don't know. I don't know if Ronda Rousey is gonna be willing to come back anymore. I mean, Baszler's performed Im improved uh, as much as you could ask her for. Yeah, her mic skills still suck. Yeah, but in ring she is awesome. Yeah, I mean, once you once you put that into effect, it's really, it's it, there's really not much to it. Like like, she's legit, bro. Like I, I don't I don't I don't really have I can't I wish I could find the words to say, but old girl is a hundred percent a legitimate winner. Uh she is money. Yeah. She is gold. Baszler is gold. I, we don't even need Ronda Rousey if we have Baszler coming around running rough shot on people. But you feel I, I feel that when she's threatened, I like how cocky she is, right? Like, like, like chick is the baddest chick in the room, and she feels it until she has to step up to Rhea Ripley. So that's why I already know that when Shayna Baszler comes to the main roster, we got a good year, probably a, two years, and then Rhea Ripley comes and then rips her whole heart out. Um, right, so, so Rhea Ripley was the soul, was the survivor. Um, they didn't really call Candice LeRae and Io Shirai winners because, I guess, feigning injuries you lose. I don't know. But they said the sole survivor was Rhea Ripley, so there you have it. They were hurt, okay? They were physically and emotionally hurt from Survivor Series, so they they, they, they had to exit the match. It's okay, though. It's okay. All right, so next up we have the match between – so now we have NXT – one no NXT one and Raw one right yep. now. No NXT two and Raw one because Leo Rush. Yes. So next up we have the 
mid-card title match. We have AJ Styles versus Roderick Strong versus Shinsuke Nakamura. This was an NJPW dream. Uh <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> what, I, what I appreciated with Survivor Series is they did not shit on NXT. No. Um, in fact, they actually enhanced NXT, and I'll talk about that after we get done with Survivor Series. Now this this um, was a very hard-hitting match. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. but you already knew it. You already knew coming into this match that we, we were going to get everything that Ring of Honor and New Japan had to offer these men, um, and even a little bit of TNA because Roger Strong and – AJ Styles were in TNA at some point. So it's not you, it, but you already knew how, how bad this was going to be. Um, th this was going to be very painful. Uh, they also emphasized the fact that Roderick Strong is the king of backbreakers. Um, and he was coming out of a brutal war game match. <laughs> yes. King of backbreakers, king of strong style, and AJ Styles, the face, the, uh, the, 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 man, the, how, the man that ate the, the, what is it? The house it's that AJ Styles built. Uh, yes, the face that runs the new face that runs the place. You already knew how this was going to go down, and he still um, takes things of John Cena every time he can. That's <laughs> right, yeah, but, that's right. Um, you, but you gotta love it though. They did this match just exactly how I thought it would. Although, remember, I, my pick was Shinsuke to kind of steal this one, um, because of you know how much AJ Styles and Roderick Strong don't like each other, both in the ring and out the ring. But that's neither yeah. here nor there, um, okay? But Roderick Strong got the cheeky. The cheeky, cheeky win. Yes. AJ hit a brutal, phenomenal forearm on Shinsuke. Yep. Roderick Strong gets in. Deuces. One, <laughs> two, three. Roderick Strong puts NXT up. Three, one, zero. That's right. <laughs> Next up we have, I don't know, I really don't know how Adam Cole performed in this match. Uh, we have the NXT World Championship. Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> against Pete Dunn. And um why did it seem like Pete Dunn was more injured than Adam Cole? Um, they were both fucked off. They came out with tape around themselves and shit. They looked like they went to hell with each with each other the night before. Um let alone Pete Dunn having to fight two of the largest men in in uh in NXT. Which uh, you, you come to find out, Damian Priest ended up with cracked ribs after yes. that match. Because he was the one on the bottom. What the fuck are you talking about? Kenny and Dane gives no fucks about anybody's well-being. I'm just going to say that right now. <laughs> Kenny and Dane does not care who you are, what you are, what you think you are. He does not care. No fucking love Killian Dane. What Killian Killian uh, I'm gonna call him Killian 100 Dane cuz that's what he is. He keeps it 100 every single time he's in the damn <laughs> ring. Um I loved Killian Dane in this mat oh, in that match on on, on the uh, on NXT, but this match right here, I was like, "How's Pete Dunne alive? Um, how's Adam, Adam Cole alive? How's Adam Cole alive? What the actual fuck? Um, who booked this match right after this match?" Well, um, here's the thing. So they keep finding ways for Adam Cole to do the Panama Sunrise. Yes. Um. He did it on the apron at one point in this match, on the corner of the apron. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, between the one that he did in between the ropes to Kevin Owens, I mean, what did you, what did you expect? Like, well, no, but how do you turn Pete Dunne's finisher into a fucking Panama Sunrise? <laughs> you know why? Because he's Adam Cole, baby. <laughs> well, Adam Cole, baby. Won this match. Adam Cole has had a huge weekend also. Oh, Adam Cole has probably had the best November of anybody in WWE. If I could throw up gang signs, M V P. There's something or that way. I don't know. Whatever how it is, that's what he is. He's the MVP. <laughs> He's the MVP of the WWE right now. Nobody's had the the month that Adam Cole has had. Point blank. Uh, so next up we have, let's hit those red porno lights. Let's get sexy here with Daniel Ryan versus The Fiend, the sexiest match on the card. Oh, man, it goes back to, so this was a, a Fiend match. No matter what Daniel Bryan did, no matter what Bre Daniel Bryan uh, was able to do or tried to do, 
that um he cannot the, the fiend is just fiend domino. That's right. I said it. I did a pun. Fiend um, So so it was proven against Seth Rollins. No matter what you do to the fiend, he is not going down easily. <laughs> nope, not at all. Not at all. Uh, the fiend was that dude. Um, as always, he kept it one one thousand one hundred, uh, and it was just the typical fiend match. Fiend came in, put da put Daniel Bryan down, walks out. Next, <laughs> well, Daniel Bryan hit him with the running knee. Yep, the fiend kicked out. Yep, went for the running knee again, and in the middle of the knee, he caught the mandible claw. <laughs> Which has me itching for a uh, a Brock Lesnar fiend match. Who won't put over who? Let's find out. Oh, well, we already know the reason that Brock Lesnar went to Raw after the fiend won the title was because he doesn't want to fight the fiend. Who does? How many <laughs> F fives? How many? Uh, how many F fives can the fiend take? All of them. That's how many. All right. So next up, we have. We have Team Raw versus Team NXT versus Team SmackDown, the men's match. Representing Team Raw, we got Randy Orton, Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, Ricochet, and a member of Team Choppa at War Games, Kevin Owens, versus Team NXT consisting of Dijah Dijakovic, Keith yep. Lee, Tommaso Ciampa, Walter, and Damian Priest with two crack ribs. Yes. Team SmackDown. Braun Strowman, Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin. I refuse to call them what they call them in the ring. Mr. Chad Gable and Ali. So two things, two takeaways from this match. Um, first and foremost, I really didn't like that they dispatched of the NXT UK champion Walter so fucking fast. I didn't well, like that. Okay, so I here's my argument with this one. Okay. Walter was dominating. Yes. For a good what? Two or three minutes? Yes. But the suddenness of the Claymore kick is what did him in. Yes. Because Drew McIntyre laid his big ass out. Which is what? I wonder if we're going to see Drew McIntyre NXT UK for a minute. Because I don't like what they're doing with Drew McIntyre on Raw. We'll get to Raw in a minute. But, um, but yeah, that was like, what the fuck? This is... The yeah, a lot of people are pissed off because they feel that they shit on NXT UK. Um, Johnny Gargano or Matt Riddle were supposed to be in. No, Matt Riddle was in this match, wasn't he? No. Was Damian Priest and Matt Riddle in this match? Yes, I think both, wasn't they? I, I know. I, I think... not, no, it, it wasn't Dajakovic, it was Matt Riddle. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I like, I remember Matt Riddle being in this match. <laughs> Yeah, because he eliminated Randy Orton, and then he caught an RKO. Yep. RK bro. Anyways. <laughs> so um, we had some big showdowns here. We had Chopper and Roman Reigns going at it. We had Chopper and Rollins going at it. Yep. We had Braun Strowman doing Braun Strowman things until Keith Lee wiped his ass out. Keith Lee? During, during the, during the um, Strowman train around the ring. Oh yeah! Said, fuck your, fuck your, fuck your train. Here's a derailment. <laughs> I think why well, I, I never failed to realize. Speaking of, because I know about uh, Strowman, I never realized that Walter was almost as big, was as big as Braun, as Braun Strowman. Yeah, he's just not as muscular. No, but like height wise, I was like, holy shit! <laughs> but it's amazing to see the size of people like McIntyre, Strowman, Keith Lee, and Walter. Well, no, because Damian Priest looks small compared to these guys. Yeah. Damian Priest is not a small man. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at fuck at all. Um, but shit, man. Yeah, I was like, okay, okay. But unfortunately, the MVP of this match did not win. Um, but Keith Lee did eliminate Seth freaking Rollins. Yes, with spirit that bomb. ridiculous ass spirit bomb, and then he hit Roman Reigns with a ridiculous ass spirit bomb. I was like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> My eyes was like, "What?" Keith Lee is really the man, the myth, the legend, and we will yeah. bask in his glory. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will definitely. I mean, so, that's so Keith Lee. Apparently, after this match, 
from what somebody said is during this match, Vince McMahon came 27 times while Keith Lee was wrestling. <laughs> you know that gif of, of uh, Vince McMahon watching Stacey Keebler's strip? That was him the whole time Keith Lee was in the ring, just repeated over and over and over and as, over. As my boys at Cultaholic like to say, Vince McMahon likes big sweaty men. Vince McMahon likes big sweaty men. <laughs> Oh, 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 God. Okay. But okay. Roman, Reigns, Roman Reigns took out Baron Corbin, his own teammate, because Baron Corbin was being a bitch. Yeah. Um, but Roman oh, Reigns was the sole survivor. I think you can see that coming from a mile away. Yes. And it was actually SmackDown's one and only win throughout the night. Oh, well, I thought they won two. Oh, Raw won two. No, I thought Raw won one. No, it was NXT 4. Raw 2, SmackDown 1. No, I thought it was the other way around, sir. Double check your records. Check it right now. I think the only one that won was the Viking Raiders. Okay, so we had Ziggler and Rude. That's SmackDown. That's one. Then we have Leo Rush. That's NXT 1. Yep. Then the Viking Raiders. That was raw, and I don't think that was their only win. So that was that was three, three, one, three right there. Okay, one, three, one, one. One. Then we had NXT, so one, two, and one. Yep. Then we had NXT again, so that's one, three, and one. Yep. And then the SmackDown win uh, going for the Survivor Series match was uh, three, two, and one. Oh yeah, my bad. I, I apologize for that. Um, so, yeah, Raw was the one getting shit on this interview then. Yes. All right, so next up we have the No Holds Barred, Rey Mysterio versus Brock Lesnar match. We all knew what was going to happen here, but we saw Dominic actually show some wrestling presence in this match. Oh, yeah, dude was like, okay, okay, I see he got them skills. Like I a five foot nine Rey Mysterio. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's got the lucha skills. I think. See, my whole thing is, is that he needs. If we're gonna have a good match, he needs some some more lucha training. I know he's been training a little bit, but some more lucha training um, would probably get him right where he needs to be. Uh, if this match is gonna happen between him and his dad at WrestleMania, which I think that was the game plan. Uh, but the one thing that came out of this match is I didn't like the. I didn't like the way it ended because if it was gonna end the way that it ended, then it should have ended with a like it should have ended ended with a, a Ray Mysterio win based off of how it led to the end. You know what I'm saying? Like to me, if we're gonna go this route and involve the sun and do the double the six one the double six one nine into the double frog splashes, then that should have been it. Like that that literally should have been the, the finish of the match, and everybody would the whole arena would have exploded. Well, you know, if there was anybody but Brock Lesnar, that probably would have been the finish of the match. Even at that, I could, you could have accepted that Brock Lesnar lost to two men. And, uh, like you know, what I'm saying? like you can't. I, 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 my, that, and that's my whole thing. Like that really should have been it. That should have been a wrap. It should have been done, and then we move on. And, you know, and then we could have had the rubber match. Brock Lesnar wants his title match immediately, type shit, and it could have. Found a way for Brock Lesnar to kill Rey Mysterio the next night. That would have been fine with me. I would have been cool with that. Um, and then it but is what it is. automatically assuming Brock Lesnar wanted to be a Raw the next day. They would have paid him a million dollars. They would have. Brock is toxic to the, to wrestling right now. If, if they if they would have paid Brock Lesnar his regular appearance money. And, and to take the belt and go back in hiding for another month, that would have been fine. <laughs> what, what is he going to say? I like, fuck, you're going to pay me the pay-per-view money early? Fuck it, I'll show up on Raw. Let me get this shit real quick. F5, I'm down. Peace. <laughs> so, Duck, right. Brock Lesnar, yeah. selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Brock Lesnar winning this match. Um... Next up, we have the main event: Baszler versus Lynch versus Bailey. Apparently, Vince McMahon was very upset at this match. 
Well, what do you think is going to happen when you have two women with the same exact wrestling style in the ring at the same time? And then you just have Bing Bailey out there like, what the fuck am I supposed to do about this shit? Um, it was exactly what happened in this match. But let's let's be honest. Becky Lynch can go is slow and pl- is a plotting match. Like she'll beat the shit out of you. That's her her, her offense. What's Shayna Baszler's offense? Baszler's offense? Beating the shit out of you. That's right. There you go. You don't even have to say it. That's her offense. Bailey has went from high flying to smarmy heel. You can't have two uh, beat up beat them up motherfuckers in a smarmy heel. The recipe has never worked. It never has worked. It never will work. And for anybody to expect this to work was stupid, dumb, or otherwise. However, Shayna Baszler did perform very admirably given the circumstances. But I think that Shayna Baszler, I said Baszler, Baszler, you say tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Shayna Baszler is the queen of three ways. And I'm not talking about in the bedroom, ladies and gentlemen. I'm talking about in a wrestling ring. Shayna Baszler, anytime that that, that she's in a, a triple threat match, she's won them all. Yeah. All of them. Fatal four way, guess what? She won them all. Uh so you have to put that into the advantage was literally Shayna Baszler's advantage to lose. And that's exactly what happened in that match. Um, so shout out to Shayna Baszler. She's the ass kicker. You gotta love it. I like it, I love it, I want some more of it. So get to talking about why well, I gotta be your easy ass real quick. All right, so we're gonna finish this up, this last little part up with uh no, we didn't. We have a uh, oh, well, no, that was it. That was it. So, yeah. go ahead. NXT, go ahead. NXT won, NXT showed out, NXT did everybody proud. But go ahead and start talking about Raw. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so, um, let me go full screen on you, biatches, in a second. Here we go. So, we ended up coming down to Raw on Monday night. On Monday night, Seth Rollins calls everybody and their mama out to the ring. Uh, let me, where's my thing over? There we go. He calls out everybody to the ring, gives this grand speech. And we you know when we, we think about grand speeches, we think of something that's going to be inspirational. You know, we think about something that's going to be, uh, you know, rally the troops, inspiring as fuck. And instead, ladies and gentlemen, we got Seth Rollins disrespecting the entire Raw locker room minus Becky Lynch, which was a curious decision because I, for one, would have loved to have paid to see uh, Seth Rollins go in on his wife. I would have loved to see how that one would have went down. I don't think it would have went down very well. I would have loved to see Becky Lynch punch the shit out of Seth Rollins, but hey, that's domestic violence. We can't have that. But first, he goes in. Um, he goes in on AJ Styles. Uh, then he goes in on Randy Orton. No, he goes. He went on Randy Orton first. Then he goes in on AJ Styles. Uh, then he goes in on Charlotte Flair. Um, and even talked about the AOP. And then went in on Rey Mysterio. And he, and, and he called his son stupid. And that, at that point, the Raw roster just said, fuck this shit. Y'all, you tripping, cuz. What the fuck is going on? What's wrong, wrong with you? So he bounces out. It's done. Only one man standing left is Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens come, comes into the ring. Listens to what Seth Rollins has to say. Listen to him run his mouth, blah, 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 blah. And then next thing you know, boom, boom, catch them with a stone cold stunner or KO stunner, whatever stunner you want to call it. He caught him with one. Uh, which stun is probably KO one, stun, baby. Which is probably, we, that's a stunner that we've been waiting for for the longest because yeah. we know that, 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 that Seth Rollins has deserved that one. Um, so we talk about, so people will, oh, is Seth Rollins turning heel? Is Seth Rollins turning heel? No. Seth Rollins is turning Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins is heel. He no heel is Seth Rollins. Okay, that's no, that. no. He's turning into his Twitter persona now. Yeah, a, a piece of shit that bitches and complains about everybody but himself. Yep, exactly. And uh, you know he didn't go in on the Viking Raiders because guess what? The Viking Raiders are the only ones that won their match on Friday. Yeah, yeah. I would have. Like I said, I was. I was just like I was surprised they didn't have Becky Lynch out there during that spot. Um, I would have loved to see Seth Rollins going on go in on his wife. That would have been something else. If you, I mean, it was wife, his fiance. That would have been something else. I would have paid to see that shit. Um, I would pay to see him go in on the on the Viking Raiders, then them go in the ring and give him the Viking experience. Oh, and, and them going on him, him going on the Viking Raiders, and then them going on him. Oh, okay, yeah, that works. Um, 
like, like Seth, you weren't even. Uh, the whole pro- uh, my whole thing was Seth. You weren't even involved in the final decision of how the uh, of how your match went. You, you literally have air bomb the hell. That's why yeah, you literally have zero room to talk. Like you know what I'm saying? Had you been involved in the in the decision, then maybe, <clears throat> maybe just maybe you'd be like, I just got caught with a lucky shot. No, you got dispatched, homie. <laughs> you got now, fuck. Now I want to know why did Kyle, this guy Kyle. Touch Eric Rowan's pet. Fucking Kyle. What? I don't even know what the damn pet is. Nobody does. It's a kid, but it's got a camera in there though. So. Um maybe it's a pet what? camera. It's a pet camera. What what this is when they need to back it back in GTV. Remember GTV uh, uh wrestling? You need to bring that back. We can find out what the damn pet is. But Eric Rowan killed this poor man. <laughs> Fucking Kyle. Kyle should have took the pet and ran on national television. Fuck it. He should have pulled a fucking, what's, the, what's Chinless' his name? Uh, <laughs> you know who I'm talking about. I know who you're talking about. The one nigga. Uh, the one who Ron Strowman tried to murder. Yes. Yes. And, and and because he got murdered, he got a, career, a whole two-year career out of it. I know. So the AOP finally hit the ring again. They beat Hawkins and Ryder. Yep. And then... The AOP look in phenomenal shape. They look in great shape. The AOP look like the AOP. I just, I just like... They came in. They started the, they started the day with suits. Then two matches later had their full ring attire on. And then, and then the rest of the hour, they had their suits back on for later, which we'll talk about in a moment. I'm just like, they're the, the fastest dressed... Um, uh, fastest to, from, from from war to peace uh, w- uh, attire ever. Like if you need them to beat somebody's ass and then be there for a security detail, they can do it in a half hour or less. God damn! Uh, <laughs> most reliable security force in the world. Doesn't matter who you need. Call AOP, baby. Um, how about how about the chop fest between Drew McIntyre and Randy Orton? Oh, speaking of this match, so yeah, we gotta talk about this one. So we have, um. We had AJ Styles come out there, running off at the mouth, flapping his gums, talking about how great he is. And then all of a sudden, uh, you had Rey Mysterio came out, won the title shot. You had um, Drew McIntyre out there winning a title shot. You had well, Ricky Shea out there winning. Out said, Drew came out and said, AJ, I've never fought to you before. <laughs> I deserve the title shot. Yeah, he said, "Of course we have to do it here in Chicago, but I'll do it anyway." <laughs> like, damn, shit. Yeah, that's my Drew McIntyre impression. AJ. <laughs> Speaking of Drew McIntyre, they have dropped the ball on Drew McIntyre, man. Like, they've done, the uh, WG, WWE has officially have done it has done it twice now. They they put Drew McIntyre in a position where he was on top of the world at WrestleMania or going into WrestleMania, and then all of a sudden. Well, I don't know what to do anymore. They should have had that man beat Roman Reigns, they, or at least they, he shouldn't even fought Roman Reigns. He should have got a title shot. He hasn't got a. He really hasn't got a real legitimate title shot since coming back. When? When is this gonna happen? Probably Drew McIntyre. I need Drew McIntyre to be a champion. Um, or else this is a second wasted opportunity. Hell, let Dr- or let Drew McIntyre go to NXT UK. A match between him and Walter would be bonkers. But I digress. Um, so we have Ricochet, Rey Mysterio, um, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre. Rey Mysterio picks up the win in this match and goes on to fight AJ Styles for the US title right after. Yes. AJ and- Styles. <laughs> Well, AJ Styles thought this was going to be easy because uh, Rey Mysterio like won almost by accident. Um, he got his ass kicked and won by accident. AJ uh, thought pin the- he did not yeah. pin or in or McIntyre. He pinned Ricochet. So my my big question now. So we're going to talk. So we'll talk about this match now. So Rey Mysterio getting his ass kicked, um, but he fights back, does his thing. OC uh, gets involved a little bit. Randy fucking Orton comes out and goes and takes out AJ Styles to then set up Rey Mysterio to win this title. And I'm thinking to myself, 
Why? Because Randy Orton is being the everyman now. He's like, I'm not going to be a bad guy. I'm not going to be a good guy. I'm just going to be a guy who feels like fucking with everybody. He straight up said that I do what I want for my own reasons. He said, shit, I told Ricochet that. I'm like, okay, fuck it. It yeah. is what it is. Uh, while him and Ricochet were tag teaming against the Viking Raiders. <laughs> I do what I want, what I want for the reasons that I feel that suit me. That's, that, needs, that needs to be his slogan. I'm down for that. I'm down for I'm down for zero fucks given Randy Orton. We was already on that path at the beginning of the year, but I mean, especially especially when he at the beginning of the year when he RKO'd one of the Sting brothers. Oh no, when he threw him onto the table, that's what it was. You remember that? Ooh, ooh, they did it again. Yeah, I was like, okay, zero fucks given. Randy Orton is the best Randy Orton in the history. So Randy Orton turned trolling AEW into a new five-year deal with the WWE. Uh, <laughs> uh, zero fucks given Randy Orton. I, I love it. It's got to be the most amazing thing in the history of ever. So now uh, Randy Mysterio is our new U.S. champion. Yes. Now we move on to the worst storyline in the WWE going on right now, and that is Bobby Lashley, Lana, and Rusev. And somehow, some way, the WWE has finally made this storyline somewhat watchable. Yes, by trying to kill Bobby Lashley. Because that's all we wanted. Isn't that all we wanted? I mean, really. I, I mean, Rusev has been assaulted by his wife on multiple occasions trying to fight Bobby Lashley. Like no, Rusev Lana has fucked up her promos in this thing so many goddamn times. Um, she talks about Rusa being a sex addict, but then she talks about all the sex she has with Bobby Lashley. Yep, exactly. You would have think that she probably missed the part that she didn't like sex with Rusev. If they would have added that part in, that would have been that would have been fine. Okay, then we. I hate, I hate, I hate the storyline. I hate that the fact this is the third time, third time they've done this with Rusev and Lana. I, I, it's not that I don't like the storyline. I, I I despise it, but that's like not even like one part of it. The problem with the problem why I despise it is because it's twofold. It makes it makes it seems like a, a, a it's it's like Vince has a thing like he he must have watched interracial uh, sex on Pornhub or something and was like, you know what? We yes, have the storyline. Yes. Yeah. God damn it. Yes, <laughs> and, and then and meanwhile they make Rusev look like a little bitch, right? And then, so it's like both of those thoughts in my head make this storyline unwatchable. And finally, just finally, Rusev tries to murder Bobby Lashley when I am all fucking for it, not because I hate Bobby Lashley, but because he fucking deserves it on the storyline. Okay, this is this is all we wanted. This is all we've ever needed. He fucking deserved it. Oh, I mean, tell me I'm wrong. No, what I'm going to say is Hornswoggle being Vince McMahon's son was a better storyline than Lana and Bobby Lashley. Because at least it would have made sense that Vince McMahon having sex with all these damn divas and shit, and all of a sudden it would be perfect for him to pop out a little fucking midget. But fuck, this bullshit? Every time I see Lana and, and, and Bobby Lashley, I I get rid of the WWE logo that's in the bottom corner, and I put the Brazzers logo. And, and, it, and it's just the same fucking shit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't fucking matter, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> and that, that told you, that's how, that's how I've been fucking feeling. I'm like, finally, Rusev gets some goddamn payback. Like, Rusev snapped. Rusev snapped. Rusev snapped. <laughs> Trust me, if, if, if it would have happened where... Bobby Lashley got the upper hand on Rusev again. I wouldn't have not watched. I would have been done with Raw. I would have not given a fuck what else happened on Raw. You know what I'm saying? That's I would have been done because I'm like, as long as the storyline as Rusev getting getting dogged, manhandled, beaten, victimized, and and and, and conquered by Bobby Lashley, which shouldn't be happening on any stretch of the realm. Okay. That no, was I mean, no. And I know people gonna listen. Oh, you guys don't respect Bobby Lashley. We respect Bobby Lashley. I think this storyline is disrespectful to Bobby Lashley too because it, it, it makes him seem like, oh, I'm just here to fuck white girls. Really? 
<laughs> Bobby Lashley is our new sexual chocolate. Oh, but without the personality. Exactly. I mean, oh, this nigga out here, it's like he took over uh what's the nigga that, that sued W that, that got angry at WWE with his teacher, Jordan Miles? It's it's like he stole his gimmick. He's just out there smiling, rubbing on Lana's ass and shit. That's all this nigga been doing. I mean, I I I was I, I'm just glad. Fuck, fuck a smiling ass nigga. I want somebody to kill somebody. See, that's my problem with your boy. Uh, um, the one dude that's managed by Titus Worldwide. You know the, the I call him Uha Nation, his real name, but I I, I forgot his is is a. No, Paul Cruz is no longer with Titus. Well, that's even worse because he has no gimmick now. Like, no, he's one of the best wrestlers in the world, but he has no personality or no mic skills. Well, they shouldn't have this nigga smiling and profiling. They need if they should have turned. First off, they should have turned him heel. He should have been a cocky, smarmy ass heel. Like that's would have been perfect because Uha Nation was a talented nigga, but but he was partially heel in ROH at uh, some point, and that worked out for me. This this Bobby Lashley bullshit, nah. I'm glad what happened to Bobby Lashley happened. And you can you can cut this sample and you can put it on Twitter for him to replay and tag his motherfucking ass in it. I don't care. Bobby Lashley is being disrespected as a wrestler, so maybe his wrestling Bobby Lashley, uh, the wrestling version of Robbie Bobby Lashley got what he deserves, and maybe he can change his ways. Fuck him. <laughs> So we also had on this show Kevin Owens versus Seth Rollins one on one, which was an excellent and, match. Huh? It was an excellent match, by the way. And we were talking about the AOP. They showed up in this match, and I'm going to say it now: they were both looking at Rollins and Kevin Owens. One was looking at one, one was looking at the other. Uh-huh. I love Kevin Owens, but you don't slap slap Acom in the face. No, oh, that that was a mistake. Um, <laughs> you, can, you you saw the slap and it was like I've made a grave mistake. <laughs> Especially when you know that Seth Rollins isn't gonna hurt you. I mean, isn't gonna help you, right? Like that's kind of one of those things that um, it's time uh, the, the see the old Kevin Owens would have bumped the fuck out. They see that's the problem. That's that, that's that's the problem. And all that the, the original Kevin Owens, the, all that Kevin Owens talk about, he knows who Kevin Owens is. When Kevin Owens, original Kevin Owens, saw that situation, he would have went out the ring of deuces. Y'all can go kill Seth Rollins, okay? I'm good. So it looks like we're building up to Seth Rollins having a APA bodyguard service again. Oh God! This is the only at least it ain't J and J security. At least it's two guys who are very intimidating. Yeah, this is actually oddly enough could be a, a set of people that could take out Brock Lesnar. Yeah. So which gives I might put the thought in my head. Could you imagine Brock Lesnar losing his title at the Royal Rumble to evil Seth Rollins and his two henchmen? Who I'm down for that. Be, who just so happened to be one of the most dangerous tag teams in the WWE. I'm down for that. I'm down for that. And I'm down for Brock Lesnar versus the AOP at WrestleMania. No, I'm down. Know what I'm down for? Brock Lesnar and the Viking Raiders against Seth Rollins and the AOP. Oh, God. The Viking and the Viking Raiders are... <laughs> yes, because Brock Lesnar's a fucking Viking. That's right. The That's Viking and the Viking Raiders. That is what I hope they're building to. <laughs> All right, so now... So now, have- next up, we're going to... Well, well, in a lot of people's opinion, including mine, was the worst episode of AEW Dynamite that we have had. And the problem, all right, so that's not saying that it wasn't good, per se. No, right? there, was good rest, there was good wrestling, but As everything always. felt disjointed. Well, because, I, all right, so I originally thought that, so I thought that the Jericho, so I, okay, let me phrase this. So the Jericho celebration started the way that it was supposed to. It should have started out. The- Before we talk about that, Virgil looks like he's been on crack. Oh, what? Virgil actually looked like. He gained some weight, actually, because the last time we seen a nigga was skinny as fuck. This nigga looked like he put on some weight. I wonder if he shit. charged everybody in the crowd twenty dollars to take his picture. That's right, Virgil. Virgil vouchers, baby. Virgil vouchers. I get them Virgil vouchers going. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so Soul Train Jones. <laughs> 
comes out. You know him as Virgil. He is Soul Train Jones, okay? He comes out and he says, and he and he gets the party started for the Jericho thank you party, um, where we all should be thankful for, for, for Chris Jericho. Le Champion. Le Champion. And we find uh, Chris Jericho comes out. We find out that he has his own website, a little bit, a little bit of the bubbly dot com. And you, you can, can actually buy two bottles. You can only buy them in twos. Little bit yeah. of bubbly for forty two dollars. Right, little bit of the bubbly, baby. One for you, one for a friend. Anyway. <laughs> now, TNA must have. Trademark the LAX name. They did. Because I well, don't think a proud and powerful tag team name for Ortiz and the other dude. Well, here's the problem. They're both Puerto Rican, so they couldn't even be called the Latin American Exchange. But they came out with a with a Bariqua gift basket for Chris Jericho. Yes, that's right. He said, you see these? These are chinquelas. They're weapons. Chinquetas. <laughs> <laughs> They put a Puerto Rican bandana on Chris Jericho's head. <laughs> hey, go solo real quick. I'm going to check out something. I'm going on mute. Talk about it real quick. Talk about the right. intro. I'll be right back. So we had some interesting stuff in this thing. We had Sammy Guevara basically give a cutout of him and Jericho hugging. And Chris Jericho looked like Chris Farley in the picture. Now, I'll never say that again. But Jericho looked like Chris Farley. Um, Proud and Powerful unveiled a box that had Chris Jericho's dad in it. And that was weird because they're in, Detroit, they're in Chicago. He plays for the Rangers. We really never seen any interaction between Jericho and his dad on wrestling before. So it was an interesting thing. Um, but Jer Jericho's dad trashed Chicago. He trashed the Blackhawks. And then Chris Jericho said, where is Jake Hager? Where is Jake Hager? <laughs> Jake Hager, Hager comes out of the back with a goat that he has named Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho, baby. Although he had a hard time controlling the goat. I thought that was hilarious, but still. Now, Excalibur said Jake Hager is undefeated. But he's never had a match in AEW, so he very has no wins in AEW either. But he's undefeated. He's this undefeated. It ends up being a part where SCU comes in as they were dressed up as the band and attack everybody. For some reason, they they redid the jumping of um, Justin Roberts from the NXT days and Jake Hab. Jake Hager had the tie, and I was waiting for him to start choking him with the tie, but he did not. That's right. That's right, damn it. I was like, this is perfect. This is beautiful. This is glorious. And then um, the, the whole SCU thing coming back was just like, I mean, not coming back, but coming out was like, it was soft. Well, because we really? all know Scorpius guy had a heavyweight title match later that night. Yeah, I know, but he, but he killed Soul Train Jones. Somebody needed to. Well, sure time wasn't. Oh. <laughs> Soul Train Jones is forever. Oh, my bad. Sorry. Sorry. So we had a couple of good matches on here. We had the um, Kenny Omega versus Pac, which yep. is always good. Yep. We had a women's tag team. Their women's division confuses me. So uh, elaborate. I have my own confusion with it, but elaborate. I'm a big fan of Riho, the yeah. women's champion. Uh -huh. But Awesome Kong just comes out there and cuts people's hair. Yeah. Who the fuck knows what's going on with um Brandy Rhodes? Well, she's in charge of Awesome Kong. Dr. Britt Baker loses to Jobbers. Yeah, she lost to two in a row now. They Ali was there last week, and we're going to get into Ali here in a minute. She was there being all nice and hunky dory. She got attacked by Austin Kong, got her hair cut. And we'll talk, like I said, we'll talk about her in a minute because she makes a debut. She comes out on the show. But I really don't see they don't have the star power 
in the women's division. They have a lot of solid wrestlers, but Riho is their best commodity. So it's a two-part problem, and, and, and I was going to talk about this. I'm glad that you mentioned it because it's something that I did want to talk about as far as um, what's going on with women's wrestling in AEW. The big problem that AEW has um, is partially – a we can say a lack of talent, um, but I really think there's a bigger, there's another piece to that. Um, the lack of talent stems from the fact that the person in charge of women's wrestling is Kenny Omega. Okay, he's the the head of the women's wrestling there, which is why Riho is the women's champion. Yeah. So the problem with that is, is that. It's it's not that Kenny Omega doesn't pay attention because I think that he does. I think that the level of commitment to making it greater is 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 not there because see he, that's where you have to defer to somebody, especially if you're going to be participating in matches and, and need to make your stuff look good. Um, I I like Rio. I love Rio. It's I haven't seen Rio in what? We haven't seen Rio in a minute since the pay-per-view. Pay per view. She only has wrestled on pay per views. Yeah. That's the that's another problem. Um having her come out there and wrestle would is 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 key. We haven't had that. That's one thing. Um and it's and, because that it's because she's still full time in New Japan. Yeah. Which, you know, I mean I, I get that part too. I just think at some point the the responsibility of the women's division needs to be given to somebody that legitimately can be invested in the women's division. Well, um, I originally thought Brandy Road was going to be over the, the women's division in AEW. No, but she's taking on a higher role on uh, on uh, AEW as a whole, yeah, as a company. Uh, so that is gone. So. This is, you might have to bring in somebody outside. I know that Gail Kim's retired, but I think it's just as an executive where she doesn't have to really be in do, ring. Yeah, be in ring as much as do promo and book and talk to other wrestlers about having them sign with AEW might be key. Uh, the, the 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 action in the women's division is good. I actually thought that the women's uh, the, the the women's division matches this week. We're actually done together a lot better than the woman than, than the Candice Michelle, uh, well the Candice Lorray, no, the Candice Lorray, uh, Dakota Kai match because that was full of botches. Um, yeah, we'll get to I, that. In a minute. <laughs> yeah, we'll get that to a minute. But, but my, I think that's what it is. The star, the the stars are the, like the wrestlers are there. It's getting them to have star power is key. Um, we haven't really seen them do any promos outside of Britt Baker. Um. Yeah, Britt Baker, I don't think they utilize her the way they should due to the fact that Adam Cole refused to leave NXT and go to AEW. Well, why would you leave? What's the What would be the point? Oh, I, know, I know, but you, yeah, I know you heard about that, that they wanted Britt Baker and Adam Cole together. Yeah, I know. Britt Baker, I think they would have her the they were. I think we would have not. Given Britt Baker uh, the same level of commitment, because Britt Baker, regardless of her losses, is still one of the largest pushed female wrestlers in AEW. I think she's even uh, like put pushed and promoed more than Rio is. Um, you haven't seen really too many promos about with, with Rio over the last what month? I've seen every week they have a Britt Baker promo on AEW. Yeah. And then she comes out and loses doing nobody. Yeah. Well, she was she was on a winning streak for a while. After she lost to Rio, she went on a three-match winning streak. And then she's lost the last two matches. And that was just like, what the fuck? And yeah, we all know in AEW, the wins and losses matter. Yeah. So right now, Britt Baker is, even, even with the two losses, is still on top of the women's division, oddly enough. Um, so, but she's her losses are the jobbers, which are like, eh, do you really want that going on? Right, she, she can't be jobbers. Can she beat Rio? Um, and we so can't now, let's go to the most pointless thing that happened on Dynamite this stupid diamond ring that they matched that they for whatever reason threw together. And apparently, the um, 
guys who do the little Titan Tron things. Uh oh, they don't like MJF because they put betrayed Cody Rhodes. That was beautiful. It was glorious. Oh, Hangman Page and MJF had a match. Which you would have, um, but you, but you should have known that. Like to me, I already knew what the outcome was when I saw yeah. what the prize was. I'm like, I can see what you call bragging about a forty five thousand dollar ring. I'm like, was this Ring of Honor? But I digress. So we have your typical good Hangman Page work, good MJF work. You have your interference from what's his name, Wadworth. Well, no, uh, Wardlow. Ward Wardlow. Wardlow. Yeah. Um, and then you see MJF hit the ugliest crossroads in the world. Oh God. I was like, ew. Well, the fact is he turned the wrong way to do it. That's, that's kind of where yeah, it that's started. Jim, Jim Ross tried to save it by calling it the double cross. The double cross? <laughs> oh, that ain't a goddamn crossroads. It's a goddamn double cross. Yeah. I'm like, wow. Okay, Jim, you just made a name for a very ugly maneuver. All right, Jim. I can't, I'm like MGF just turned it to, to turn it the wrong way. That's all. He had the position. Hangman Page like, where are you going? Where are you going? <laughs> We're not supposed to go this way. <laughs> it was very ugly and awkward. Uh, uh, then yeah. we hear, then we hear, it's me, it's me, it's DDP. Yep, and he comes out all DDP ish. Um, Looking great because of DDP yoga. <laughs> Yes, and he said, <laughs> and then he, he proceeds to tell MJF off, and then Wardlow tries to step in his way. He said, you're about to get your ass kicked by a 64-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think people forget, I, I think people forget in WCW's heyday, DDP was pushing 50. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was the most over-wrestler in the company. Anyways, anyways. He is the he is the the best point of person you can look at for organic fan support. Yeah, exactly. And you know what the crazy part about this whole uh, the whole Warlow uh, Diamond Dallas Page thing is, if you think about it in perspective, what's that? With all that DDP yoga that he does, DDP actually has a legitimate shot of beating Warlow. Yeah, if they were uh, DDP versus Warlow is going to be at the next pay per view. Oh, that would be kind of lit. Oddly enough. So then after that, Cody Rhodes comes out. Cody Rhodes. Where, Cody, where the fuck are they get? Do they buy their jobbers from the same store that WWE does? Jobber, jobber Cody right? Rhodes may tap out to the figure four. Far air growing last week. They were in Chicago. He didn't have to go anywhere. Just imagine jobbers being a are, We have your jobbers just for you. Just imagine getting a paycheck in the mail from both AEW and WWE at the same time. All right, so earlier I talked about Ali. Um, thank God Excalibur is on commentary because for some reason Cody Rhodes makes quick work and he does a little pose showing his scar over his eye from doing a header into the ramp at full throttle. Yeah. <laughs> Not full gear, I mean. Yeah. Um, then the ring gets cut open. And here comes somebody, and all you hear is Excalibur goes, it's the Blade. The crowd didn't know who the fuck this guy was. Then here's the Butcher. The crowd didn't know who the fuck this guy was. Jim Ross, Excalibur, how the hell do you know who these guys are? <laughs> Excalibur hangs around in different circles than you, JR, okay? That's how. I, I guess so. But then, like I said, last week we had nice, sweet, innocent Ali. Get attacked by Austin Kong and a piece of her hair cut off. And this week we have the knife, the butcher, and the bunny. Allie looking very dominatrix style with a bunny mask on. And she's a hot woman. Um, I will give her that. But this made no sense for them to attack Cody Rhodes. Um, we'll find out one day. Maybe, maybe MJF sold the ring, okay, and, and hired some help, okay? And this is the, okay. So throughout the show, the wheels were proverbially doing this, get ready to come off, and they came off at this point. Yeah. Um, because nobody knew who the fuck these guys were. I know AEW is trying to get an, you know, trying to make 
good independent wrestlers' names in homes, but give a promo package or two for people. I didn't even, I didn't, they, we didn't even expect them to come, let alone, you know what I'm saying? After a Cody Rhodes squash match. Let me see. Let me see if I can find these guys. The I Blade. Up and there's very little information. They just says two independent wrestlers from North America. The Blade and the Butcher. Let's see. Uh, who are these guys? What do we know about AEW's newest tag team? Nothing. Uh, not a not a goddamn thing. Why 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 does this nigga? Why does the blade have like a mask from a horror movie on in this promo? Um, they well, were they in. had a black mask on. Yeah, so it was the name of Andy Williams and Pepper Parks have been a destructive force to be reckoned with. They've been working together since 2017. And that's why nobody knows who the fuck they are, because it usually takes about 10 years for you to make your name for yourself on the circuit. The Blade, his name is Pepper Parks. He's, he's the Blade. Pepper Parks. Yes. He's, he's the husband of, husband of Ali. Okay. But still, like, they just pop up out of the ring, kill Cody Rhodes, and then walk to the other side. And then leave. That, so that wasn't even my problem with the segment. I would have been cool with that. But how did they repair the ring to get Matt Matches going after all this went down? Yes, yeah, so after this happened, we have Chris Jericho. No, we have Kenny Omega versus Pac. Yep. I'm like, did they fix the ring that fast? It takes forever to put a ring together. What the fuck? Oh. I think during the commercials, they just put cardboard over that part real quick so they had quick access. Okay, that's fine and dandy, but I don't think cardboard, if somebody's laying in the corner and somebody, like, you know, jumps from that corner onto that side, there's a hole still there. You know why? You know why? Why? Pro wrestling, that's why. <laughs> I can't even argue with that. So we got Kenny Omega versus Pac. Um, Pop has a two match advantage over Kenny Omega one on one. Yep. This is another great match between these two. And Kenny Omega tried to kick Pop's chest through his fucking back at one point in this match. He deserved it. Anyway. <laughs> Pop is still the best heel in wrestling, folks. <laughs> yes, without a effing doubt. Um, you know, the reason he called himself the bastard. Yeah, the bastard. <laughs> <sighs> But you gotta love it. It was a, it was a, it tore the house down. It was what it was, what it should have been. I was proud of them. I, I'm finally glad Kenny Omega got a win over Pac. Maybe this is time that he finally gets, uh, you know, it's just due. Hopefully, we'll see. Well, for and I don't understand this decision either. We we skipped over this, um, but for some reason, the best friends beat the Lucha Brothers. Yeah, I was like, what. Who, what, where, when, how, why, and where? And Orange Cassidy distract. The reason the the reason the best friends won was because Orange Cassidy distracted um, Pentagon being dressed up as a turkey. Yes. Um. Orange Cassidy, who just died last week at the hands of Billy Gunn. <laughs> um. Yeah. I unless I it, unless it's show, when I seen the best friends beat the Lucha Brothers, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be a bad show. <laughs> that's not. That's not nice, Phil. That's not nice. The Lucha Brothers are the best tag team in the world. The universe. Because they've oh they've they've transcended transcended into alternate universes, including Lucha Underground. Okay, they're best the tag team tag, in the universe. They're the, only, they're the only tag team wrestlers who, in one week, wrestled AEW, New Japan, AAA, and Impact, all in the same week. <laughs> best in the world, and won all of them <laughs> except for this match. Yeah. All right, so now we got to get to uh, Scorpio Sky Jericho. Um, you're going to have to talk about this one because I'm not going to. I refuse to. So, Scorpio Sky hit his normal spots. 
Jericho's Jericho. Apparently the Judith, the Judas, the Judas elbow was very easy to counter now. Um, even though it wiped out Kenny Omega, Joey Janela, and a few other people really quick. Apparently Scorpio Sky is the kryptonite to the elbow. It's been scouted, Sim. It's been scouted, okay. Um, this was neither man's best work. Nope. Um Scorpio Sky went for a top rope move and got caught with the code breaker. And the reason I'm talking about this, like I was very like I'm very disinterested, is because it was a very boring match. Yeah, I felt that this was shotgunned a little too fast. It was. They could have pushed this on for a few more weeks, had the SCU against the inner circle, blah, 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 blah. But no, they, they threw Scorpio Sky into this match. All to set up John Moxley, Jericho. Yes. Go ahead, real quick. I gotta uh I gotta go ahead and talk about a little bit more. I gotta help. We gotta talk to my daughter real quick. All right, now Moxley comes out of the crowd and doesn't even say nothing, doesn't even do anything, just looks around. And Jericho's in the ring. What are you doing here? What are you doing here? You just made the list. You want some bubbly? Um I don't understand what AEW is doing right now on the show in particular, but this, I really believe, hurt them due to the fact that NXT has been unmissable for the last month. Yeah. Um, but I think things kind of go back to normal. I think they'll go back to splitting the audiences because I think what happens, especially with the last week that NXT finally won a uh, – a uh, the ratings war is because of what was going on in WWE. Yep. Um. I I think that things will go back to normal again because there's they're gonna have to. Yes, they're gonna be booking a lot more of the main event stuff, but there's still gonna be in between stuff with wrestlers that people aren't attached to, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um. Like where the fuck? They, where the fuck was the Jurassic Jurassic Express in this episode? Uh, it'll happen again. Once once we get the Dark Order, I think we're gonna have Dark Order versus Jurassic Express on New Year's. I think that's the plan because the New Year's is so gonna be the show is gonna be like a miniature pay per view. So, um, all right, let's jump over to NXT. NXT starts off with the hypest party in the world with all the NXT wrestlers out there celebrating their dominance of Survivor Series. That's right. That's then right. We get, oh. Then we hear shock. The system. <laughs> and if I'm not mistaken, the only person who got a point for NXT was Roderick Strong. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm like, um, Adam Cole, I think you're delusional. Quit while you're behind, buddy. It's not a good look. Just stop it. Please stop. So we have Adam Cole doing his best Seth Rollins impression. Yes. Going out there, running down the whole roster. In the ring, we have Keith Lee, Dijakovic, Matt Riddle, and Ciampa. Ciampa says, Goldie, daddy's coming because war is over. That's right. And there's oh. nothing standing in between you and me. And then we hear Finn Balor's music hit. Prince Balor, okay? Prince Balor. Prince Balor. <laughs> I apologize. Prince Balor. To where Ciampa said something to him. I even had Keith Lee say, you see that shit? And he just owned that motherfucker right there. Tommaso <laughs> Ciampa looked at Finn Balor and said, well, hello, Prince. I am your king. <laughs> <laughs> Which set off an excellent match, and we'll get into that one later. Um, I so, love that match, but we'll go ahead. Yeah, the kickoff match was Keith Lee and Dominic Dajakovic. Versus Fish and O'Reilly for the tag team title. Yes. Bobby Fish got dropped awkwardly on his head and knee by Keith Lee. So he had to be replaced by Roderick Strong, which they quickly threw out. Free bird rules, which is not anything the Undisputed Era does. But, hey. <laughs> hey, it's in the contract somewhere, probably. I mean, hell, they just they just gave the tag team title to Bobby Fish. Um, you know, when you, you, when they won it, like after, yeah, after yeah, 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 oh, here's your title, Bobby. No big deal. Here you go. I really hope Bobby Fish can get over this injury bug he has because that knee has not been right in about two years. 
No, it hasn't been right in, a, in about two years at all. Um, I just think – I know he landed awkwardly. I think it was just a, probably a little bit of a more of a sprain that they were used to, that he was used to. So um, so the highlights of this match were in plenty. Keith Lee – all right, so I'm going to set this up for you, James. At one point in this match, Dominic Dijakovic – Double choke slam power bombs, both Roderick Strong and Kyle Riley. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. I was that was beautiful. And here comes um, Adam Cole running down the ramp. And go ahead, James. Boom! Ejected that fool into the fifth row. Not not the fifth row vertically, the fifth row horizontally. Um, that's how far that, that he got ejected. Um and even Keith Lee was shocked that he ejected him that far. Give you a shit. <laughs> uh, and then hello. One, two, three. <clears throat> so this this was not a good night for Adam Cole. <laughs> Um, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, you it keep freezing up. What? Let me switch off the camera and switch it back on, but keep talking. All right. I'll put you solo. So this was, this was the start of not being a very good night for Adam Cole. Um, being launched into the crowd like that, I'm sure, was not a good feeling. So next up, we had Candice LeRae versus Dakota Kai. Um, James mentioned this earlier. He um, This match was very botchy. I know they're trying to push Dakota Kai as a heel right now. For some reason, I just don't like her work as a heel. Um, I just think that these two are so used to being face and face and teaming together that the heel aspect of it going against each other has just been I don't know, this was weird. It was a, it, they weren't in sync. Um uh, a lot of it was a lot of botches in this match. A lot of missed um, picks. I mean, the story in itself, it's told a good story, no doubt, um, still. <clears throat> but I think the match didn't really come together until the end, until finally that they went for the finisher, didn't go well, and then old boy, old girl tried to hit her with the with the well, thing. LeVay tried to do a suicide dive, and she hit her with the brace. Yes. So I just didn't like the fact that if, if, if Dakota Kai's thing is going to be the brace, the referee stole the brace from her. Um, and she didn't get it back. But somehow she ended up with it and still hit Candace away with it. That's right. Um, this is not either of their best works. Lorraine's much better than she performed in this match, and Dakota Kai's much better than she performed. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. Um, the fact of the matter is this. So it was a it was a good match. I mean, it was a good match storytelling match. It was just a bad match as a whole. And then Rhea Ripley saved the match. Uh, we'll save uh, Candice hey. LeRae from basically dying because that's exactly what's going to happen to her. Um, and and that I mean, and that was it. That was that. And then, but I was surprised at what happened after this because um, they had another women's match after this one. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Shielding taking on um, Evan Eva Bourne, something like that. Yeah. So yeah. Because yeah. Shielding broke Aaliyah's face. Yeah, Vanessa Bourne. That's the place Vanessa that she Bourne. fought. Yeah, because she and Lee broke Aaliyah's face a couple weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then um, Z Lee came out, win, won this match again. And uh, for some reason, Shayna Baszler, the tweaker blonde, and the other girl came out. <laughs> the tweaker blonde, damn. They came out. She came out. Rec Shop um, did Shayna Baszler things. Uh, was talking that shit, which she had the right to talk that shit because – uh, NXT, she won her match. Because she beat Becky Lynch and Bailey in the same night. Yep. Problem is, she didn't win a War Games match. And the winner of that War Games match came out and was like, "Let's go, bitch." Yeah, let's go. And I think it's gonna be a it's gonna be an excellent match. It's gonna be fun. Um, I told you we're, this is what I've been waiting for. Shayna Baszler and, and Rhea Ripley they're gonna get down. When is the next? Paper. When is the next takeover? Well, the next takeover is not WrestleMania weekend. It's the first. It's like the second weekend of February. They are doing Worlds Collide during Royal Rumble weekend, but they are actually having their own non. They're actually having their own Sunday pay per view in February. 
Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So but that's what we'll be looking at. I think the WWE is finally realized it's not a good thing to have takeover before one of their pay-per-views. Yeah. So give me a second real quick. Um, talk about the... I want you to talk about the... Oh, my God. I'm my Leo Rush to Zawa match. Yeah, my nose hurts. Give me a second. I'll be right back. All right. So we have another champion, Leo Rush, putting his title on the line again. He's already had more title defenses in his three-month reign than Brock Lesnar has in the year. Leo Rush against Akira Tozawa. Akira Tozawa coming out, putting the ball shirt on the ramp, representing his brand. This match was the match of the night. Um, these two guys are hard hitters in the cruiserweight division. Tozawa is one of the best performers that we have ever seen as a cruiserweight. And this added more to Leo Rush's tenure as champion due to the fact that this man can do anything in the ring. He's the quickest guy on the on the roster. He has a move set that will that can envy Seth Rollins, Pete Dunn, Tyler Bates move sets. Leo Rush can fly. He can he has a little bit of a power game. Tazawa, this man, we all know him as a stamina monster. One of the biggest spots in this match is a snap German suplex off of the side of the ring onto the ramp. It was a very dangerous spot. Leo very Rush much so. Lucky. He flipped out of it and landed on his stomach because he would have broke his fucking neck. Yeah, I was like, I don't like that's the one thing. As much as how it's intense and how cool they look, I don't like those edge of ring spots because it's literally the hardest piece of the ring because it's the part of the ring that has to keep everything together. Well, th this spot in particular, they didn't go on the edge of the ring. Tazawa ger snap German him onto to the ramp. That's where fucking snap. Oh, that's even worse. Why would you do that? Oh well, fuck it, it is what it is. I'm, I was in, I was entertained either way. Uh, but but Leo, like, Rush, Leo Rush kept his title. Yeah. And at the end of the match, he's like, "I respect." The camera was behind him. He's like, "I respect that man." Yeah. Yeah. He doesn't respect Angel Garza. I mean, we all know that now. But you can't. We. I can't wait for this. I told you, it's either going to be him and a uh, um, a Swerve Scott or him and uh, Angel Garza. But I wouldn't be surprised if it's a triple threat between the three. So next thing, next thing on the deck, we had a quick little match between Shane Thorne uh, and uh, oh goddamn. Oh, um, the dude from Saudi Arabia. Yeah, uh, Mansoor. Mansoor. Now, yeah. again, the ramp gets heavily involved in this match. Shane Thorne hit the wickedest fucking high-angle back suplex I've ever seen on the ramp. Oh, yeah, that was vicious. I was like, damn. <laughs> I was like, damn. Uh, but Mansoor came out, showed out, did his thing. Um, I, I like the kid. I just I don't know where he fits in. Uh, into the grand scheme of things, right? That's that's always been my problem with Mansoor. Like, I feel like because they tagged him as the person that represents WWE in Saudi Arabia, there's not really a... They haven't really said, like, this is where you belong. Like, NXT is like he's coming to visit. And I feel like if he was even on Raw or SmackDown, he'd be coming to visit. So... Yeah, um... Mansoor... They have dropped the ball with him due to the fact that nobody except for the Saudi Arabia audience has actually seen him live. Yeah. That, and that, that was the weird thing. And that's why the crowd support was mad up until we got to the, uh, the finish of this match. Yeah. So, um, which they he loved. Hit, he hit a springboard neckbreaker. Yep. A very nasty one. <laughs> yeah, that was like, ooh. But I see, I see what the WWE sees in Mansoor, and I hope it bodes well for his future. He's a good wrestler. It's, I don't think he's a great wrestler. I just think it comes down to uh, wh where does he fit in to the WWE's plans? Like, because you know how WWE treats you either you're a main event star or a jobber. The problem is, is that if they job him out too much, then it feels like that they're. That, like he won't get the respect of Saudi Arabia, 
But if they have him go over too much, then he feels like, oh, he's only being used because of Saudi Arabia. You see yeah, what I'm saying? I, I want to see him and Leo Rush wrestle. Yeah. Because that will ha- let me gauge where Mansoor is. Yeah. Because right now, in my opinion, Leo Rush is the best cruiserweight in, on the division. Yeah. Yeah. Although he does, Mansoor, he high flies and stuff. But he's not like a quick, really quick, quick cruiserweight. He, no, he's, he's, a te- he's a technical cruiserweight. Yeah. Like the type of person that'll be able to hang with both Drew Gulak uh, and any of the high flyers in 205. So, yeah. All right. Start talking about Balor Champ. I got to grab something real quick. Okay. So Balor, uh, Balor versus Ciampa uh, went just about as you can expect from this match, which was good as fuck. Um, both these men... Gave everything they had in their first ever meeting on WWE. Uh, they they fought together in other wrestling leagues. Uh, however, this was the first time they fought in WWE, and they tore the house down for being a Survivor Series fallout show. This match in itself was good from beginning to the end. Their tra- their styles transitioned very well. Um, their, tra- their, their styles transitioned very well. They did a good job. Feeding off of each other, it was I was actually thoroughly entertained. Um, at the end of the day, uh, Adam Cole, how the how this finish went? Adam Cole comes out, tries, uh, throws the belt in the ring. Uh, Finn Balor uh, uh, hits his move onto the belt. Chopper kicks out at two, um, and then uh, he throws out the belt. Oh, ow! You're back, sir. Yep. Give me a second. All right, so, so I'm, 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 uh, Finn Balor hit the DDT on the belt. The referee, she does a great job counting the pinfall because it was quote unquote accidental um, that the belt was there, and not really Finn Balor knew it was there and did it on purpose, so there was no reason to disqualify the man. Um, then, like you said. Chopper kicked out, and we apologize for this episode. It's a little disjointed right now, but we'll clean it up in future episodes. Um, what was I saying? So uh, Chopper is looking out of the ring at Adam Cole. Adam Cole delivers a a pretty damn nasty injury from the floor to the middle rope on Chopper. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Clap, 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 clap. Can yes. you hear me now? Now you can talk. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now, so that I was saying, so we had a, we had the first interference by Adam Cole with the belt. Um. Uh. It was it was purely, accidentally on purpose with that. Um. But Chopper kicks out at two, and then uh Finn Balor hits his brain buster. After that, and it was a three count match. Was a wrap. Um, Adam Cole gets in the ring thinking everything is all good with Adam uh, with, with uh, Finn Balor. Uh, he starts doing his pole, his pose. Um, Adam Cole pats Finn Balor on the back, and all of a sudden, bam! Pele kick. The kick that knocked Johnny Gargano out of the world. <laughs> did, did you? You saw. Uh, I don't know if anybody else saw, but I saw um, Finn Balor's eyes change into demon-like eyes when he hit mm-hmm. that right before when, it, when his arm got patted and he hit the Pele kick. Yeah, Finn Balor is showing that he is not part of the undisputed era. <laughs> he's not part of the era. He's not. He's not a good guy. He is not a bad guy. He is yes, the guy. guy. Um, and that's how. It, and, and it makes me wonder how does this break down coming into the future? I guess we're gonna have to find out next week on NXT. Um, well, uh, at no, the end of NXT, they did a very special thing. The young lady who. Um, was the referee in this match is being promoted to SmackDown. Yep. Um, she has been a phenomenal referee in her time in NXT, and I'm glad that we do have more female referees out there. Like AEW has a really good one. Yep. And now this young lady, Tommaso Chopper, gave her a very good goodbye after everything was over because she has actually refereed 90% of Chopper's matches in the last two years. Yeah, it's crazy, right? That's something to think about. Chopper has a paid referee. Anyways, uh, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Or maybe I did. Anyways, so I know 
Big Sin has to cut out here in nine minutes, so we're gonna do the nine minute SmackDown run through. Oh no, we can, we can go. We can go for about ten. We're good. Okay. Well, that's all we got. That's what I said. Nine, ten. He said we we got another minute. It's okay. It's okay, but no more than ten. All right. Get so it? Smack. <laughs> here we go with SmackDown. Um, the show kicks off. Roman Reigns coming out. Being all happy that they got a victory in the Men's Royal Rumble match, and he wanted Baron Corbin to come out and thank him. <laughs> it sounded like Jericho. Where's my thank you? <laughs> Baron Corbin, of course, comes out. What are you delusional? You turned on me. Blah 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 blah. blah. <laughs> did, 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 did. Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin. <laughs> blah 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 blah. blah. Blah, blah, blah. I'm blah, going to blah, have blah. Bobby Roode fight you because apparently Baron Corbin is back to being the GM and making all the matches on SmackDown. That's right. Woo! Oh, but bad. they did something very bad with this with Bobby Roode and Roman Reigns. Yes. At a point, Baron Corbin passed Bobby Roode to Scepter. Bobby Roode put Roman Reigns' head on a chair and swung the scepter so hard, Roman Reigns is lucky he moved because he put a hole in the chair with the scepter. Yes. Well, wasn't this, Bobby Roode say something about Roman Reigns' family? That yes, was, he did. Yeah, that, I heard about that because I'm like, I brushed through the match just a little bit, um, and then I heard something about Roman Reigns' family. I said, oh, God, he's going to die. Bobby Roode is going to fucking die. Bobby fucking Roode is going to fucking die. And sure enough, that is what happened to Bobby fucking Roode. Fucking died. Okay, if we had not learned anything about Roman Reigns' career, he never involved his family in anything that he's doing in the WWE. Yeah, not at all. Never involve your family. Never involve Roman Reigns' family in anything, especially if they're Samoan. So oh, Roman Reigns buried first he ran by Baron Corbin, speared Bobby Roode through the guardrail. Threw a bunch of chairs at him, was about to throw the stairs on top of him, but then he's like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to throw the announce table on top of him. Fuck Bobby Roode. <laughs> and that was the theme for that match. Fuck Bobby Roode, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and it's all Baron Corbin's fault. Yep. Blame Corbin. Blame Corbin. So we also had, we had um, Fire and Desire making fun of my girl, Nikki Cross. And somebody, they, she, uh, what in the worst insult of the night? Oh, so the the real, not so real, Mandy Rose. I don't make fun of people's appearances, but look at Nikki. She looks like Thanksgiving leftovers. And in my mind, I'm like, hell yeah, she looked delicious. <laughs> I'm saying, like, the, the worst insult of all time. Um, who, who wrote that? Who wrote that? I, that's why I want to know. I have a feeling Mandy Rose tried to go rogue on that. That makes that makes me wonder. Uh, no, I don't know because with with, with one of the WWE writers say, uh, telling uh, Dean Ambrose, John Moxley, to say something bad about Roman's cancer, I would have had to have been that writer because it was either something stupid or something insulting, and it it was it was stupid. All right. And even when she said it, Nikki, you see Nikki Cross goes, "That means I look good." <laughs> Thanksgiving leftovers. Okay, fuck it. It is what it is. I love I love me some Nikki Cross. It's not a secret. Nikki Cross is begging me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I know she likes the big man because she's married to Killian Day. Yes, yes. Um, so Nikki Cross wins that match. Uh, Fire and Desire proceed to jump her after the match. And we get our first injury return of the night. Yes. Alexa fucking Bliss. To the loudest a- pop she has gotten in years. Yes, Dare was so happy, and Nikki was so happy to see her. You see the, uh, I was like, we they spent like two, three minutes after the match, just nothing showing them hugging each other. I was like, oh. yeah, I thought she was about to re-injure Alexa's neck. <laughs> I don't know. I'm on board with face Alexa Bliss. Okay. Yeah, we need it. We need it right now. Yes. Um, because we just need to be rid of Mandy Rose. Yeah. <laughs> that and the fact that there barely there are any. Face females on SmackDown. I just realized that. It was just Nikki Cross, basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, now now Lacey Evans has cut to that promo. 
Yeah. Sasha Knight's doing her best. Adam Cole and Seth Rollins impressing. <laughs> Calling out everybody on the SmackDown women's roster except for her, even though she got beat by Rhea Ripley. Um, I, I, t- I tell you what, though. Whoever's writing delusional person promos, keep, keep, give the, keep that man a job, all right? Cause, yeah, because he's doing <laughs> very well. He's doing he's doing the Lord's work with the delusional promos. The funniest part about this promo, though, is the fact that Lacey Evans laid out Sasha Banks and Bailey was like, "Damn, <laughs> I'm sad, right?" I'm like, what you go to? But remember, I said that Lacey Evans is char- didn't I say this two weeks ago? I said Lacey Evans's character works better as a face. I said yeah. you have a, a single mom who was in the military. Okay, legitimate military chops, marine chops. You know what I'm saying? You don't make her a heel. You make her a fucking face. The you only know? reason it worked in NXT is because of the superiority of NXT's performances. Yes, exactly. I'm just saying. So this was perfect. This is exactly what I expected from Lacey Evans. But like I, I said, Bailey was like. Cole Cockton with that woman's right. Okay. Well. Did nothing. She did nothing to help her best friend. I mean, what are you gonna do? You gonna get clocked with that right hand too? What, what, what did you expect? <laughs> so we're looking at probably a Lacey Evans, Sasha Banks, Bailey feud over the next few months, which I'm okay with. I, I'm down for that because Bailey, because Lacey Evans was not ready for the work that Becky Lynch does. I no. think she can handle the work that Bailey does. Yeah, I think she can handle being the face that runs the place on uh, on SmackDown. I think that that's perfect. It's perfect. I'm down for that. I told you, I'm down for that all day, twenty four seven. So it is the giving of thanks, and the new day felt like giving an open challenge. Yeah, the tag team titles, and who answers? Shinsuke Nakamura and Cesaro, probably the weirdest tag team Cesaro has ever been in. Uh, I mean, but it makes sense though. Now they have a legitimate mouthpiece in Sami Zayn. Um, I'm all bored for this. Uh, yeah, the, the the match was actually pretty good. Um, no doubt there. They did their thing. They kicked ass. Uh, new day one. So it, this is what it is. Yeah, Sami Zayn tried to. He went out there, got the plate that had the pancakes on it. Tried to use it as a weapon. Got caught. Cesaro was like, "Why are you throwing him out?" And then all of a sudden, there was a power bomb, double foot stop from Big E and Kofi Kingston. Vicious, <laughs> vicious, vicious, and vicious, and vicious. So Which then after I- we get our next injury return, somebody coming in saying the SmackDown roster is weak. We have a fiend. We have a king. We have a bunch of weaklings, and I'm back to ravage the land. Yeah. The Irish workhorse Seamus, no Mohawk, the full head of hair, the beard, Seamus is back. Yes. I'm 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 hoping that that I don't know whether he's gonna come back as a face or a heel. Either way, he works as both. Um I think he's come back as a tweener. Think as a tweener? Could be. I'll be down for that. I'm down for Seamus. Um successful spinal fusion surgery. Um, he does. I think everybody knows he suffers from spinal stenosis, which is what made him take having to take that uh, the length of time off necessary, because most people only get spinal stenosis, spinal fusion surgery, is if they have the really bad neck injury like Edge did or Stone Cold Steve Austin did. He had to get spinal fusion surgery because of the spinal stenosis disease that he has, um, which is a little bit more complicated. Uh, and with that said, it, like, it's been successful. He's actually been training doing MMA to get the strength back in his body. Uh, he's are been you, doing okay, boxing uh, as well. Are you happy that he's back? Oh, 100%. It's like finally SmackDown has a little bit g- legitimate big man. The only thing I hope is that they don't toss him into a feud with Roman Reigns like off top. Like I don't want that. Um, I think we still got another couple months of Roman Reigns, Baron Corbin. Unfortunately, um, they both work. Okay, my whole issue with this is they both work great. Get away from each other. Uh-huh. I don't see these two working good together, Roman and Baron. Um. Well, well, it works good though. I mean, of course, they. I like the promos though. I like the. I, I don't like the cheesy promos as much as the interactions between them. Yeah. The, um, shit, talk, the shit talk is fun. 
Yeah, but also remember that Roman Reigns has been absent up until a, a few weeks ago. So either way. <laughs> so, okay, so now we get to what, in my opinion, was the best thing about SmackDown. Three separate times of this night. The first time Daniel Bryan was in the ring talking. He's a great promo. He's telling the fans, you know what? You guys made me feel it. And he started chanting yes. He's like, you know what? It don't feel the same. And that's how I'm doing it with you. Yes. Yes. So the yes movement is back. And then we hear, we're all friends. In. <laughs> Firefly Funhouse and Mr. Bray Wyatt going, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and he goes, you know what? We had a lot of fun playing with you, Daniel. And we want you to come back and play, giving him another chance to take on the theme for the heavyweight title. Yeah. But Bray Wyatt has a new toy that he he says since he has one, he feels he should have one. This is where people are starting to not understand what's going on here. So they debuted it debuted the Fiend's new toy, which is basically a Fiend stretch out face with let me in on a leather strap as the Fiend <laughs> heavyweight title. Oh <laughs> Lord. I showed you the picture last night. Yeah, I thought. Yeah, I was like, "What the fuck is this shit? Um, like, why?" Well, what people and I go and read through the comments and other people are, like, "Oh, this fucking sucks. This is this. This is that. They're ruining the integrity of the universal title." I said, "Number one, what integrity has the universal title ever had? Number two, <laughs> this is not the universal's title. This is the fiend's toy." Yeah. Yep. Um. And as we've seen in a, the next promo package, go ahead and say what you're going to say. Yeah, I was saying that what people don't understand is that this is the prize that is dangling over everyone's head that everybody as a top-tier star wants uh, on SmackDown. But they also know that if you want this top prize, you're going to have to come to The Fiend and get it. That is a lot easier said than done. It's probably not even easier said, let alone easier done, okay? Because <laughs> when you say it, you're like, you're going to have to beat The Fiend for the – nope, nope. Nope, I will. I will stay in the intercontinental title race. I, I'd rather do. I'll go get knee in the face. I'll go get knee in the face by Nakamura a few times. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. No, we're good. Like, no, 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 no. We're good. We're good. But no, if you want this, you have to go to the fiend to get it. And he loves playing. So. <laughs> he loves playing with his toys. Yeah. Um. So next up, we have the Miz talking to Daniel Bryan, and the Miz is giving Daniel Bryan some good advice here. He's like. Everybody who has wrestled the Miz and who has wrestled the Fiend has changed. Think about it. Rollins, heel turn, Balor, yeah. back to NXT, and the Fiend brought the Prince back. Yeah. And now here we go, Daniel Bryan. Um, Daniel Bryan will be only the second man to fight the Fiend more than once. Yep. Yep. Um, so Daniel Bryan's back there talking to Charlie, and Charlie's like, yeah, the Ray Wyatt just offered you a title shot. What are you going to say? In the middle of Daniel Bryan talking, we're all friends in and then Firefly Funhouse once again. And Bray Wyatt's in his muscle man dance t shirt. <laughs> he's talking to Hutchkiss the Pig, who ate all of Thanksgiving. Uh, Bray Wyatt tells Hutchkiss, it's okay to be fat. P H A T. It is okay. You can be <laughs> fat and still have self confidence there, Hutchkiss. That's right. That's it is right. okay. But don't believe everything you hear because the story of Thanksgiving is a lie. <laughs> He's like, the real Thanksgiving was between the muscle men and the lizard men. What? <laughs> <laughs> so this turns into a hip hop video of Husky, of Huskis the Pig. I sent it to you on, on Facebook. I don't know yeah. if you watched it yet or not. Uh, Huskins the pig rapping about <laughs> about Thanksgiving while the Illuminati, the lizard people, and other images are flashing in the background. Oh my god. It, and Bray yeah, Wyatt doing the muscle man dance, and he even calls the Illuminati the triangle people. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the triangle people. <laughs> the fucking triangle people, really? Okay, so oh. next up we have for our third and final segment of the night with Daniel Bryan. He's yes. in the ring, talking to the fans. Then in the middle of the yes chance, 
the lights start to flicker. Yeah. The red light kicks on. And done properly, the fiend comes from underneath the ring. God knows how long you were sitting under there because Daniel Bryan had a pretty lengthy promo. <laughs> <laughs> the, Daniel Bryan tries to fight off the fiend. The fiend drags him to hell. But wait, I forgot to mention, Bray Wyatt said in one of his earlier vignettes that he's going to be showing a new face. Yes. Daniel Bryan's under the ring with the fiend. The fiend raises up and just starts tossing chunks of Daniel Bryan's hair into the ring. I'm just trying to figure out, was it his hair on the head or is it hair on his face? It was the hair on his head. I it was too long so. to be the beard. I would hope so. I was just so like... I'm oh. guessing we're going to get Paul Daniel Bryan versus the fiend next. Tommaso Ciampa? <laughs> At this point, I don't think Chopper wants none of the Fiend either. I don't think anybody wants none of the Fiend. I, I don't even think Brock Lesnar for the right price wants none of the Fiend. So, to but in my opinion, the Bray Wyatt Fiend work, Bray Wyatt is the best kayfabe character in the WWE right now. Well, yeah, because you mix a little kayfabe, a little reality, sprinkle a dash of entertainment, and you have the Bray Wyatt story. Let him in. And like we all say, let him in. That's right. If we so, are beautiful black entertainment, you will let us in. Yes. So we, we I know you have to go, so we don't have time for a five and five. I got uh, you. I got you. We'll knock it out real quick. Okay. All right. You ready? Yes. Question one. Uh -huh. Who is the rightful number one contender in NXT, Finn Balor or Tommaso Ciampa? Well, Finn Balor beat Tommaso Ciampa. I mean, Tommaso Ciampa. So you got to be looking forward to a Tommaso. I'm oh, sorry, a Finn Balor Adam Cole match at least within the next two or three weeks. Um, which I think that's going to end in shenanigans if it does happen. All right. What are your real thoughts about the Fiend's Fiend title? I like it. I like it. It's because it's the fiend presents an alternate reality, right? So like every time that alternate reality pops in or every time the fiend steps up, I feel that you're in his alternate reality. And that belt is a representation of the alternate reality. He doesn't give two shits about the WWE. He gives a fuck about scaring people and, 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 and getting redemption for the wrongs that Bray, Bray Wyatt has been wrong. So I love it. A hundred percent. I love the fiend. I love the fiend's new title. So, Feeding off of what you just said, um, does that mean John Cena is going to get his? I hope so. Because we, if we remember, John Cena is the reason Bray Wyatt was buried the first time. Yep, I hope so. I wonder, I mean, John Cena says that he wants to come back to WWE. I mean, that would make a good SmackDown program, at least until WrestleMania. Um, he could take out John Cena, it beats John Cena at the Royal Rumble. I'd be down for that. All right, so who do you think should be the next challengers for the SmackDown Tag Team titles? SmackDown Tag Team titles. Ooh. Um, considering we, we're probably going to get – well, we don't, we're not going to get too many open challenges. Wow, what, ta what, ta what uh, tag teams are there left at this point? You got the, <clears throat> the Lucha House Party. You have Heavy Machinery, Ziggler and Rude. Shinsuke or Sami Zayn and Cesaro, possibly the bar. I, w I would like to see an elimination six pack tag match. At the I guess at this point, um, either that or heavy machinery. They've been sticking around them, and I think it'd be a good entertaining match. Otis is so over. <laughs> yes, the caterpillar. Right. Final question is: Brock Lesnar just announced that he is not working some dates that he had agreed to work to the WWE on TV. How long? How much longer does the WWE continue to invest in Brock Lesnar? Royal Rumble. Uh, I say Royal Rumble is going to be about where it's stopped because that his contract is up at Royal Rumble. Um, his, his dates it, 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 after that he's on. You have to pay him per per diem. I think they take the belt off of him at Royal Rumble, and I think that we probably probably I will probably have to gauge where ticket sales for WrestleMania are at that point. Um, but I think if they push enough stars and NXTs involved, you, the, we, I put it this way: we've already seen to the point where we don't even need uh, Brock Lesnar to have a successful pay per view. Yeah, 
Survivor Series was okay. Uh, I mean, the, the match with him and, Re- and Rey Mysterio was okay. But you could have done without that match, and I think Survivor Series would have been an even more excellent pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. So I think that we're at a point where maybe we don't need him anymore. Maybe NXT is the new thing. Okay, one bonus one. Yes. Would you <clears throat> would you accept Keith Lee, Brock Lesnar at the Royal Rumble? Oh, yeah, easily. Everybody, I think everybody would, would love to see that match. Um, just because of the strength that's involved. My problem is, is that Brock Lesnar is so freakishly athletic. Um, is he going to put Keith Lee over in a good light? Well, <clears throat> this was the Industry Outsiders Wrestling Show, Episode 2. It'll, yes. be up on, it'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. Thank you all for joining us. We'll yes, see yes. You next time. See you next time. Holla at your boy. See you next weekend. Deuces.